You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Thank you so much for being here at 6 a.m. on this Wednesday. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Netta Irampour. Yeah, glad you're with us here. We're going to start off with your forecast. Meteorologist Evan Narani tracking things as we all gear up for opening day. That's right. And it's, it's going to be a yeah. great one out there. I mean, nice. today we kick off with the dry conditions. Uh, we saw a few showers yesterday morning. Not many. Uh, we're going to continue with dry skies from now through Friday. And that's going to mean that opening day is looking really nice out there. So uh, today, next 12 hours, temperatures are going to be warming their way to the mid 60s. Partial cloud cover. Uh, tomorrow, we've got the expectation of very similar temperatures, maybe a degree or two cooler, 63, 64 degrees as our afternoon high. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. And now today, a campus supervisor at Degenio Middle School accused of sexually assaulting a 12 year old is set to face a judge for the first time. Omar Galeana was arrested on Sunday in CBS 8's Regina Irita live in Encinitas where Galeana worked there, Regina. Yeah, that's correct, and I can tell you that he's also charged with supplying marijuana to this minor. So Omar Galeana's arraignment is scheduled for later in the afternoon. He was a campus supervisor here at the Gueno Middle School. Now, the San Diego County Sheriff's Department Child Abuse Unit arrested the 21 year old for sexually assaulting a minor. Police say Galeana met with the victim outside of school hours last Friday. Detectives from the North Coastal Sheriff's Station and the Child Abuse Unit immediately initiated an investigation after it was reported. Detectives arrested Galeana on Sunday and booked him into the Vista detention facility on charges of child molestation and furnishing marijuana to a minor. A letter has been sent out to parents by the superintendent notifying them about the incident. It also informs parents that Galeana had been a campus supervisor for three months and is no longer an employee of the district. The letter adds that the school's district primary concern is the safety of all students. They say they're taking this information very seriously and cooperating with law enforcement. Now, members of their administrative team will be visiting with all classes to reinforce messages about campus safety and to remind all students that their voices are important. So back out here in Encinitas, the San Diego County Sheriff's Department is considering this an ongoing investigation. So anybody with further information is advised to call police. For now, I'm live in Encinitas, Regina Yurita, CBS 8. Regina, thank you. And in separate cases, Hoover High School associate principal Charles DeFritas is accused of distributing lewd matter to a minor. He will be in court this week. And Mount Carmel High School teacher Stacy Walker is accused of sexually assaulting a student for years. She pleaded not guilty last week. Later this afternoon, the brother of former Chula Vista Councilman Andrea Cardenas will learn his fate. Jesus Cardenas and his sister have pleaded guilty to grand theft. CBS 8's Chris Crow joining us live downtown to tell us what's expected to happen in court today and over the coming days. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, good morning. While well, a lot of the attention has been placed on Andrea Cardenas because of her position as a city council member and what to do once she resigned and then the upcoming election. Hey, Zeus, quite the political player here in San Diego as well. In fact, a city of San Diego uh, chief of staff for council member Stephen Whipper before resigning amidst those charges, which he eventually pleaded to guilty to two of those two of those being grand theft at a total of eight charges. Now, as part of that plea deal, those other six charges were dropped and he faces sentencing today. Uh, now, as part of this ongoing saga here, once we find out what happens to Jesus, we move on to what will happen to his sister, the former city councilwoman who was slated to be sentenced in August. But in the meantime, the city of Chula Vista is trying to figure out who will hold her council seat until the end of the year. Remember that seat still has to be filled. The council is expected and is uh, mandated to make a good faith effort to fill that seat while not actually mandated to go ahead and fill it. Now what's going to happen is several of the candidates that are vying for the temporary uh, appointment will actually be interviewed by the city council on Thursday, April 4th. Each candidate is going to have a 10 minute interview with a three minute intro and one question from each council member. We did hear from some of those candidates just yesterday about why it is that they believe that they should represent District 4 in the city of Chula Vista. It's interesting. I'm glad that they're moving along. I think it's been a long time since District 4 has had any representation. We've been, you know, ignored for, for quite some time, you know, until they decided to do the district. You know, nobody really cared about the District 4. In my eight months of hopefully serving for them, I will be able to do as much as I can and uh, bring District 4 forward in every way. 
sentencing for Jesus Cardenas will begin at 1.30 p.m. here in downtown San Diego. Eric Anetta. All right, Chris, thanks for that. This morning, six construction workers are presumed dead after a ship hit the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse. A search and rescue mission was suspended last night. Sources telling CBS News multiple alarms sounded on that ship after it lost power and propulsion. The pilot issued a mayday call, giving law enforcement enough time to stop anyone else from driving onto the bridge. CBS 8's Jasmine Ramirez talked to engineers to find out if a similar disaster is possible here. Baltimore's Key Bridge collapsed after it was struck by a massive cargo ship. Such a unique set of circumstances and such a tragedy. No one can anticipate such things happening. Engineers say safety is always the priority when building these structures. We as engineers, our job has a lot to do with the safety and well-being of the public. Structural engineer Nehemiah Mabry says the Baltimore Bridge was built in the 1970s and Coronado Bridge was built in the 60s. Structurally, they're very different. He says the Coronado Bridge is a girder bridge, while Baltimore's is a truss arch bridge. Referring to sort of the diagonal parts of the metal and the still above and then the arch is the shape. They're actually among the strongest freestanding structures I guess one could design. Yet the cargo ship hitting the support structures appeared to snap the bridge in Baltimore. The Structural Engineers Association of San Diego says bridges just aren't built for this type of impact. Like impact from such a big ship is not something that you typically design. Uh, but, uh, you know, the Coronado Bridge, uh, large ships are actually not allowed to sail under it. There are separate shipping channels. Uh, for those kind of ships. I reached out to Caltrans about the Coronado Bridge. I'm told safety is prioritized through rigorous and strict seismic and safety standards. Caltrans has installed fender systems on all major bridges to protect them if they're struck. And all state-owned bridges are inspected to meet the highest national standards. Our, our thoughts and prayers are just with everyone affected, even in, in the least bit. Um, by this, this tragedy out in Baltimore, and uh, I'm pretty sure the authorities and those in charge will, will make the right decisions moving forward. Jasmine Ramirez, CBS 8. And now listen to this here. Later on today, Imperial Beach City Council holding a special meeting on the sewage crisis. If this is something that you are fed up with, has impacted you, you'll want to attend this workshop. In this workshop, they will have updates on the infrastructure at the International Wastewater Treatment Plant. That's the one in San Ysidro. They'll also talk about funding to try to address and stop the cross-border pollution. And there's a report on the impact of sewage on the health of people who live nearby in IB, surrounding areas. Many people, as we've been reporting here, uh, have been getting sick after heavy rainfall. So they'll have an update on the numbers, the data they've seen. The workshop starts at 6 p.m. at the Burris Auditorium. And the public, everybody, encouraged to attend this. Find out more information. It could impact your health. Uh, obviously, it's something we've been following very closely, so we'll be sure to bring you updates as well. A lot happening here tomorrow. We've got uh, opening day. Yep. Of course, the Aztecs will be playing a sweet 16, yes. and there's watch parties for that. There's so, it's a very big sporty day. Right. And, and then, that it times out good. 110 times out very baseball, well. yeah. 439 basketball. Yeah. It's just <laughs> going to be an afternoon full of sports. Yeah. We're hoping for the best for both of our San Diego-based teams. Mm -hmm. And weather-wise, we're shaping up really nicely. We know the uh, Aztecs won't be playing here in San Diego, but for everyone watching across you know, bars and different areas across San Diego, Diego. We are expecting dry conditions, sunny skies. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s for tomorrow, very similar to what we have on hand for today. So today's forecast, you can essentially copy on over into tomorrow. We might be a degree or two cooler, but we're, what we're going to be looking toward is partly cloudy conditions, temperatures in the 60s, a light breeze that will accompany it, which means, hey, a light sweater might come in handy just because when you're not in the direct sunlight out there, mid 60s and low 60s can still feel a little chilly at times. So that's what we're expecting for today and tomorrow opening day as well as that uh, game against UConn. Uh, we are watching for current temperatures out the door right now to start to warm up in about an hour. So 610 right now, sunrise is not coming for another half hour or so, and that means that we're still going to be on this uh, cooler train ride to start off our uh, our Wednesday morning. That's because skies are clear, so we don't have really any clouds out there to help hold in warmth from yesterday, help act like a blanket for us. Instead, 36 degrees right now in Ramona, 44 in Escondido, 48 in Oceanside. It is 47 right now in Encinitas and Del Mar and 52 in San Diego. Today is the warmest day of the week. 
We'll have some low 70s out there and then tomorrow we'll start that gradual cool down, but it's not by much. So tomorrow afternoon we're still at least in the mid to upper 60s, partly cloudy skies. We stay dry into Friday, so both games for the Padres Thursday and Friday. Good to go. Dry conditions Saturday and Sunday are where we start to see rain move in and even some thunderstorms starting up early Saturday, continuing through Sunday and even into Monday. But for now we're enjoying this view outside. How about it? Sunrise at 642, still about 30 minutes out and then that sunset at 706 PM. Let's check in on traffic. See how your roads are this morning. So far it's quiet out there. Not a big surprise. Starting to see a little bit of volume pick up on the five and the 805 typical for this morning. Also starting to see a little bit of congestion mid span on the Coronado Bridge. Let's take a look at your border wait times as we head through the six o'clock hour. It's 80 minute wait right now at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. That's going to run you about an hour 20. Otay Mesa Port of Entry just a bit faster, an hour 10 in total. Back to you. Evan, thank you very much. And still ahead here, insider trading involving Del Taco stock. The minor league baseball players charged here in San Diego. Plus, syphilis cases among babies in San Diego are up. What officials say pregnant women should do. And trouble sleeping? What a new study says could be the solution. 